Hi, this is the Black Bear Prepper, and we're going to be continuing on today with our cope slash rock climbing courses. Now, these are for review only. I recommend you go take a class, but we do teach a few classes during the year, and we wanted to have something for people to review. Now, this one is going to be on knots. Um, it will basically be not for every knot that I recommend. We have another video that I call the thir my 13 favorite knots that you should watch. But this particular one is going to be on knots that we use at our COPE camp every year, girls camp. So the first one is going to be what we call a sport knot or a figure eight on a bite. You're going to take a good bite of rope and a bite meaning it bent over like this. You are going to, and I'm going to try to do this over the white table. So we have a big loop of rope. We're going to go over our two fingers like this so we make a cross over the top we're going to come underneath our two fingers and we're going to pull out our fingers and push through the hole okay so this is what we're looking for now the way we test this is we can count the knot so we have two 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 and two so when I count it, I'm counting each rope in twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay? It's the only knot that comes out if I count it up like that, two, ten. Now it does the same thing on the back side, too. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Now, the other thing we want to look for in a good knot is to make sure that we have less than a fist length of rope here. So we don't want anything farther than a fist length. Now on the other side, we want a minimum of a fist length, but we always put a safety knot in here. So this is something to kind of look at here. We're going to talk about the safety knot in a second. So we're going to do that a couple more times to show you guys. This is probably one of the most common ones you'll do. Okay, so we're going to put it on our fingers, two fingers. We're going to cross over our fingers all the way around. We're going to pull our fingers out and the loop that is left, we're going to put our bite through and then pull it tight. Now, the smaller the loop we can make, the better. Okay? And again, we want to count it up to four, six, eight, ten. Now, this is our tie-in knot. We call it a sport knot because we'll be putting a carabiner on here and carabining into the harness of the girls or the boys, whatever group you're dealing with. <clears throat> So we want to dress it up and make sure it looks nice. This is what it looks like on the back. It's that figure eight shape is what we're going for. I usually try to make sure I'm looking at it from the top. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Again. Now I recommend having a piece of rope at home. It's not expensive. You know, you're looking at, you know, ten bucks. You can get quite a little bit of rope. And you can cut it for all your different knots you're going to do. So again, we're going to take our two fingers. We're going to wrap it around our two fingers, all the way back around, so we have our loop up here. We're going to put our, pull our two fingers out and pull down through. Now once we've got it, we count it up again, two, four, six, eight, ten. Our next one is going to be our safety knot. Now our safety knot is half a double fisherman's knot. So that's the one we use. There's lots of different knots you can use. Basically what we're going to do is we've got the rope laid out flat like this. We're going to go around once. That makes us a little loop here. You'll see it. We're going to go around a second time. So we're coming back up again for our second loop here. We're going to cross over our main line and come down through and pull tight. Okay. Now this this distance is not as important as making sure that there's not a lot of slack here. So if it's way too long, you can just tie it up here. But we still want to have that small loop up here. This is actually a really decent setup. This gives us at least our fist length of extra, plus a safety knot, our eight, our, uh, our ten points here, and a small loop half the size of our fist. That's what we're looking for in the perfect knot setup. Now I'm going to tie that a couple more times so everybody can see it. Again, we're going to go underneath, making our loop here. 
So we're crossing completely over. So our, this is our main line going to our climber. Up here, we're going to cross over the main line. We're going to go all the way around the main line. Now we have a loop that pops up here. We're going to go back through the loop and dress the knot. So you'll hear that in a lot of different climbing type situations. We want to be able to dress the knot, make the knot look clean. If the knot doesn't look clean, it's best just to retie it again. Clean knots are an easy way to tell they're done right, and this is probably the most important part of what you'll be doing up at camp. So again, two, four, six, eight, ten. We have our double loop here. It's nice and tight. It's not pressing on the thing. We have at least a good fist length in between, less than a fist length on our loop. Okay? One more time, because this is, like I said, an important one. I'm going to go over the top, make our loop, around, and through. Okay? So it's just loop, loop, all the way over the starting line here, and back through the loop we've made. Okay? So that's a figure eight on a bite with a safety knot. Now your particular group may use a different safety knot, that's just fine. This is one we found that works really well. It's easy to tie and it's easy to see. It uh, tends to be really good for what we're using it for. The uh, second knot we want to talk about is when we do our webbing. This is I think probably the easiest knot right along there with the square knot. So this one it's called a water knot. We use it for our webbing slings whenever we're doing around the trees, setting up our anchor systems. So we're going to go over the top, just cross over the top, and make an overhand knot. Simple as it can be. Now we don't want to pull the knot super tight at this point. We want to make sure there's at least a good fist length. I like to see a little bit more. 8 to 10 inches is always nice. We're going to take the other side of the rope. We're going to pass it and follow the knot. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come underneath the, we're going to go around the knot, following the exact same way the knot is done, and back out through. Now, this particular knot, we followed up. We've got a nice clean knot now. It will flatten out nice and flat if it's done properly. Now, the one thing I don't like here is I don't have enough here, so I'd want to retie that. So. We're going to go ahead and do it again. We'll start all the way from the beginning. So we're going to make a nice overhand knot. Go all the way over. And it's a simple overhand. Okay, nothing fancy. Okay, once we've got it down to that point there, we're going to go ahead, come underneath, make a good, you know, 8 to 10 inches out. Come all the way back around and follow the knot through. If it's done properly and dressed properly, it should set nice and flat on the ground. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we lay it there, there shouldn't be any big bulges. It should look nice and flat. There should be at least a good fist length coming out of each side. You know, and not always is it going to be, sometimes you'll have way long on one side and way short on the other. That doesn't matter as long as there's a fist on each side in case of a stretch in the rope. I'll do that one more time. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to take it. We're going to make our loop, our overhand knot. We're going to take our other end, we're going to pull it underneath, over the top, following, like I said, we're just following the old knot all the way around and back through. So both of our ends should be coming out on top. So these are our, our ends here, they're both on top, and the regulars are on the bottom, just like if you do a square knot, kind of the same idea. And we want to look at it and make sure it's a nice flat knot. And then we get a nice perfect loop all the way through. Okay? Now, the last one we're going to be doing is talking about putting our ropes up in the air. So when we pull them through our uh, belay pulleys, we're going to be making a couple different 
knots here and I want to show you the first knot you're going to make. I'm going to show you two different ways to make it and then we'll show you what we use. We normally will be using paracord when we do this because the paracord is left up in the trees so we can pull the good rope back through. We don't want our, our good climbing rope sitting out in the sun all day long so we tend to take it down several times. The first one is called a clove hitch. It's just crossing over itself just like we're doing here. We're going to pull underneath and pull through. So we're going to dress the knot. You get both of your ends are coming out of the center with a loop over the top. As simple as it gets. Okay. Now one other way we can tie this and we use this a lot in the system we use is we're going to use two loops. So we loop underneath so the rope that is our main line is coming from underneath. We're going to make another loop and we have our end line comes out the middle there. Okay, so we're going to end up with something that looks just like what we just tied with two loops. So again, that's a loop and a loop. And it comes out with both the ends coming out the center with the loop over the top. Okay, now what this will look like when we're tying onto it, we're taking a piece of paracord. Keep in mind the paracord is up in the up in the tree, try not to let go of the paracord because the paracord is the only thing that's going to go up there, otherwise we've got to climb back up there. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our loop, the little bunny ears, making sure it's both coming out the center. We're going to slide it about eight inches down the rope. We tie it up. We look for our ends both coming out of the center. And then we're going to do half inches. So we're going to go ahead and loop the rope just over itself. So we're just going to make half of a clove hitch. We're going to slide that down the rope and pull that tight. Okay? Simple as it gets. <coughs> and just one loop and we pull it tight. Just like that. One loop and we pull it tight. I like to do a minimum of three and then I finish it with a clove hitch. So our loop over the top our second loop and we dress it. <coughs> and that allows us to be able to pull up through all of the carabiners and allows the rope to be pulled through or pulled back down and reset the rope at the end of the day. So let me show you that one more time. Like I said, this is for review. Hopefully you've already done this in the class several times. We put up and down the ropes, and it pops right off real nice and easy. That's why we like clove hitches, even under stress. They tend to untie really easy. So we're going to do a loop and a loop, making sure there's a little bit of tail on there. I always like to leave at least, you know, that, that basic minimum amount of a fist on everything I do. We've got our clove hitch. We're going to do or half hitch over the top so the loop is coming around and underneath we're going to do one more time loop so we get our three loops in there nice and tight even that right there would tow it up just fine but if we make a nice little clove hitch at the very end it tends not to get stuck or pull loose even if it does get stuck And go ahead and dress all the knots and tighten everything up and we have it there. This will be most of the knots that the average person will need to know there at camp. This allows them to be able to kind of review at home so you make sure we don't screw it up while we're up there. <coughs> you know knots should be double checked and triple checked and quadruple checked a hundred times a day but it's always a good idea to practice at home and make sure that you're checking them. I practice at home too. I keep one of these little pieces of rope in there, five or six feet of paracord. You can practice all these knots while you're sitting in line at home. You know, they all do the same thing. I tie them exactly the same way I do when I'm here. I'm going to practice all your knots that you're going to need and allow you to be able to still count them up with a small paracord that you fit in your pocket. So. 
as always, have a great day and thank you very much for watching our video. If you can, like and share. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to comment and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much.